Hello my friends, this is Black Captain 8 here again. In today's video, we're gonna get into probably the most requested topic for this channel, and that is going to be discussing the USS Discovery's jumping ability, summoning ability, and the crews that you're gonna to wanna to put on it to get the most out of the ship. So diving right into it, let's get right to the research you're gonna to need to do so that you can do the fancy Discovery summoning ability that a lot of people want to get the ship for. It's kind of the only reason really to get the ship. In order to unlock this USS Discovery summoning here, you have to first complete the cultivated mycelium jump efficiency. There is 10 out of 10 for that, and your USS Discovery impulse speed, three out of three for that. Doesn't sound like a lot when you take into consideration the cost of both of those researches plus what you're gonna have to use to actually unlock the discovery summoning ability, it's going to cost you an absolute boatload of these spore drive components. If you wanna know exactly how many to get the cultivated mycelium jump efficiency finish from level one through 10 is gonna cost you 5,425 spore drive components. To get that USS discovery impulse speed to three out of three, it's gonna take 4,020 spore drive components and then when you go research your USS Discovery summoning ability, there's only one level of that, thankfully. It's gonna cost you another 5,410 spore drive components, and a side note, it's gonna cost 693 uncommon G3 gas, so you're gonna wanna have that on hand as well. That's gonna be a grand total of 14,855 spore drive components. That is a huge amount of those, especially when you take into account that to get the Discovery from tier one to tier nine, which is where it caps out at, it's gonna take you 48,025 spore drive components. So 31% of that cost, roughly, is what it's going to take to get the ability to summon with the Discovery. Put another way, you can get the Discovery from Tier 1 all the way to Tier 5 on that same amount of Spore Drive components. Why that matters is because the higher tier that your Discovery is, the more Spore Drive components and Discovery Recruit tokens you can get out of your refining that you can do every week. I'll go ahead and toss the table that was shared to me by Gregor, credit goes to Elkars for it, on the Discovery Refinery Scaling. So you can go ahead and take a look at it. Pause the video here if you wanna take a look at that. If you really wanna see a still version of it, I will toss it up on the Discord channel as well. The link will be below. With that being said, there's really three different crews that you're gonna to wanna to put on the Discovery. There is one crew for warp distance, one crew for cost efficiency, and the last crew is just gonna be a standard speed crew. Now you can also combine a hybrid approach to that warp distance and summoning efficiency, and we'll get into that as well. But real quick, if you like this video so far, go ahead and give it a thumbs up real fast for me. It really helps me out on this channel. I appreciate it. The first crew we're gonna discuss is going to be your warp range crew. So right now, I don't have that crew on here. All I have is Chang on the Discovery. My Discovery is currently tier seven. It does not have the Spore Drive Mark Seven upgraded yet, and we do have our USS Discovery Warp Range at three out of 10, which is the highest we can get until we get our R&D to level 37. So we're only gonna get 15 more added to our Warp Range, which is pretty good. That puts us at 41 out of the box on this Discovery. Now 41 is gonna keep us away from Tygo Core right now. It requires a Warp Range of 53 to get in there. So this is why this Warp Range crew is pretty important. This is why you should have been pouring your ranks into that Cadet Scotty, a common officer that you get pretty early on in the game. You wanna get him to rank five pretty quickly. You don't really have to level him up at all. He doesn't really help you that much as far as stats go. So just worry about ranking him up to rank five and he will give you that warp theory that increases your warp distance by five on your ship. That's very important. We're gonna go ahead and take him, not putting him in the captain's seat. We're gonna put him on the bridge, however. Instead, we're gonna take the original series Scotty counterpart. We're gonna stick him in the captain's chair because this is an explorer, his captain's ability is going to kick in, which gives us that warp range increase by four. So right now we're at plus nine. We need to get three more in order to get this discovery to Tygo Core so that we could get a ship out there really quickly or a ship that's not capable of getting there on its own, say it's a tier three epic ship. You're not gonna be able to get that out there until you get it to tier four and increase the warp drive on it unless you summon it in there. Now, thankfully we're shooting this video in 2022. We have a brand new officer from the syndicate named Grush. We're gonna stick him on here. He's going to fight or flight. He's going to increase the warp range of the ship by 8% right now. I believe he is at Lieutenant Junior grade two. So that 8% should help us go ahead and bump the rest of the way over. If we go ahead and confirm this, we can check our details real fast. Our warp range is now 54. So Tiger Core is no longer outside of the realm of possibility for us. That is why you would use this crew. So remember that's gonna to be TOS Scotty as your captain, Cadet Scotty on the bridge, and then if you have him, Grush will be on the other side 
on your bridge so that you get the maximum warp range that you can do. And as I go ahead and demonstrate, I like you guys, I'll go ahead and waste the cultivated mycelium to get it out here. We're gonna go ahead and jump. It's gonna cost us 466 cultivated mycelium to jump out here. Now that we're out in Taigo Core, we're gonna do something pretty goofy. We're gonna take this completely Origins Discovery crude Rialta and we're gonna go ahead and summon it out here for no reason. So to do that, we hit the black alert button. It will bring up this little menu. It costs 1400 right now for us to go ahead and pull the ship over. We're gonna click on the Rialta, summon it, and here it is that quick right next to you. It doesn't even worry about the black alert animation. It's just there. So now we actually have a Rialta out here in Taigo Core. It's not gonna do anything, but that will show you that it gets out here. Now, what I did want to show you real quick with this Rialta is that if you go attempt to recall it back to your base, you're going to get this error message that says you cannot recall the ship. It is too far. So in order to get that ship back to your base, you either have to take your discovery back to the base, set it outside and summon it to it or any place that the Rialta would be able to move from there freely, or you're going to have to blow up that ship to get it back home. We're not going to go ahead and waste the additional cultivated mycelium on summoning it back. So we're just gonna go ahead and take our Rialta and smash it into something and it'll be back at the base. Bye-bye Rialta. And it's gone. So now with that done, we're gonna go ahead and recall our ship back to the base. We're gonna go ahead and jump back to base for the sake of making this video. It's gonna cost us 466 more. We'll go ahead and see if we can beat it to the base real fast. It will take it to the outside of that screen as we mentioned in the previous USS Discovery video. When it jumps, it's going to just come straight in from the outside ring of that to wherever you're going. So it doesn't just jump to the center of a system, unfortunately. So that wraps it up for our warp distance crew. We're going to go ahead and switch to our mycelium efficiency crew. That's going to make our jumping and our summoning cost us a lot less. To do so, you're going to take Paul's stamens. He doesn't have to be any higher than rank one to go ahead and do this because you're only going to be using his captain's maneuver, Network Navigator. He's going to increase the cost efficiency of jumping and summoning with the Discovery by 20%. Your real clinch here is going to be Culver. He is Synergy plus his Officer ability. Learn from the best. He was going to increase the cost efficiency of jumping and summoning with the Discovery by 15%. And then we're going to toss Saru over here. He's not that good of an officer for most stuff, but he does provide us maximum Synergy. That's going to take statements from is 20% efficiency to, should be 26 by the time we get done with this, if we confirm. Yep, 26% efficiency with the jumping and summoning of the discovery. So now if we'll go ahead, we're not gonna be able to do jump to Taigo Core now because our warp range is back down to that 41 that we had. But we'll go ahead and pick this space in Outlaw Territory, Valence, just as good as any other space. And we'll go show you that if we were to go here, it'll bring up this menu. It will only cost us 366 cultivated mycelium now to do our jump. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. And now we can see that to summon our Rialta used to cost 1400. But if we go ahead and click on the black alert now, it's only going to cost us 1099 cultivated mycelium. So we're actually going to save a decent amount of that mycelium with this efficiency crew. I'm not going to worry about summoning it out here and back. Now that we've mentioned both the warp distance crew and the cost efficiency crew, we can mention that you can and very likely will leverage a hybrid of those two crews. For instance, we could take Saru off of here and put Cadet Scotty on. We're not going to get quite the same amount of efficiency. However, we will get that plus five warp range that will take us back up to 46, as you'll see over here. And the reverse is true. We could go ahead and take our TOS Scotty, toss him back in the captain's chair, our Cadet Scotty, and Culber. Culber does not have to be in the captain's chair to give us that officer's ability. This is rank three, by the way, that increases the cost efficiency of jumping and summoning with the discovery by 15%. So we can go ahead and use this. Now with both TOS Scotty and Cadet Scotty on here, we went from 41 to 50, and we still get to pick up a little bit of efficiency with that. Now, with that being said, the final crew that we'll mention will come into play mostly when you are attempting to take over a territory you do not own. You won't do this as much when you're defending a territory because you can actually base in a system or nearby system. But if you're trying to conquest a territory, you will oftentimes put pan and either full synergy with Rima, Navi, something like that, or half synergy with one of the other augment officers, and then we'll put Culver back on there as well. That way you have a hybrid speed crew that also gives you some sort of efficiency. You want that speed so that you can evade other ships that are trying to attack your discovery while you are throwing ships in. Usually you can do that because once you bring a ship in, it will be right next to your discovery. It doesn't take any time to get there after you click on the cost for that ship to summon it to you. So you can usually defend your discovery pretty quickly. You just want to move it away. However, what I would recommend in a territory takeover situation is to go ahead 
put the full efficiency on your ship. So to recap for us, that's going to be Paul Stamets, Culber, and Saru. Then jumping to a nearby territory that is either unoccupied or is not part of the takeover that is occurring. That way you can put a ship right next to it or pretty close to it. The warp timers are extremely small in territory. That way you don't have to worry about defending your discovery as badly. Maybe somebody will come hunting for it. However, with warp timers being really small, you can go ahead and keep that discovery out of sight in a nearby system and summon your ships to that and then warp them into wherever you're attacking. It just helps keep your discovery alive. However, it's not earning points. So whichever way you prefer, if you feel confident that you can summon your ships in really quickly next to the discovery and keep it afloat, that's great. Otherwise, you're going to have to repair that thing and warp it back into the system and then continue doing it. Either one works fine. It's just a neat little trick to put it in a nearby system and continuously summon ships to it and then ferry those ships a system or two over to where the battle is occurring. I find myself most often leveraging these crews, especially the efficiency crew, when I am trying to either quickly recall a ship from a space if I need to relocate my base really fast, say I knocked on somebody's base and got lucky they were not home and I didn't realize that I was going to actually get to do some raiding today, that happens quite often, or if I need to quickly get my ship to an armada before the timer runs out, especially in exchange space or when the event rolls around into the Borg space because those timers are so short. The only other time that I use it is to move it near a system that PvP is happening, say we are either defending a raid that we started or one of our own bases from a raid, then I will usually not put it in that system so it doesn't get destroyed, but I'll put it in an adjacent system, warp ships to it, and then keep sending them in if I have to while we try to get a hold of somebody and either defend our own raid or have somebody come online to bubble so that they don't get raided. And very occasionally, I will go ahead and drop it into Terminimurus, whatever this system is called, Terminimurus, Terminimurus, whatever the system is, because I can't get it all the way out to the level 37 swarm space right now. It's going to take a while before it even gets there, if it ever is able to do that. I'm sure at some point it will. But if I drop it there, I can summon my Franklin A there. Franklin A has a horrible warp timer at tier one, which is where you're going to have it if you are at ops 35. So I like to go ahead and summon it out there occasionally when I just didn't send it overnight to sit there. For some reason, Swarm Space is protected under row on their, our server, so a lot of people will leave them floating overnight. If I forgot to send mine out there to go ahead and do my dailies really quick first thing in the morning, then it helps to go ahead and pull my ship there with the Discovery to knock it out really fast. And that about does it for the Discovery Cruise. If I missed something, go ahead and leave it in the comments below as always. If you haven't already, please Hit that like button for me. It really helps out this channel. Otherwise, live long and prosper, my friends. Thank you for checking out this video, and we'll see you next time.